Hi, I'm George from Nibanalne Dom. You probably won't remember the name, but who cares? The important thing is, I'm going to show you how to make floating wine holders, just like these. It's a very simple job to do. You don't need many tools to do so, but it's very satisfying, as I said. So, let's do it. I'm going to show you how to make it, right? Let's go. Whoops! Sometimes you just lose control over your machine. Whoops! <coughs> a couple of... Oh, okay, it's just... Okay! This is... The battery is dead. You have to be prepared. The floating wine holder could have different shapes and sizes. The most important thing is, it's physics. It's to keep the balance straight in the middle so it doesn't fall either, either direction. That's why we need this. Well, <laughs> see, it's supposed to stand, but not, don't kick it. All right. Now, the important thing is the length. It's about nine inches, which is about twenty-two and a half centimeters in metric system, right? Uh, and basically, the width of it could be anything from two to four, six, even inches, if you like it. It doesn't matter. The width is not important. The important part is the length and the hole in the middle to hold the bottle which is about approximately 35 millimeters or it's uh inch and three eighths if i don't f it up no it's right the other thing which is important so the whole bottle actually stands like that it's the angle which you cut at the bottom right the angle is approximately 40 to 42 degrees you could go about 45 as well but it's it's a small variation yet if you put the bottle correctly it'll not fall so this is from the side and this is the op the hole we're going to drill through and the bottle goes in here long story short this is how the final piece should look like all right and as i said it's physics so you put the bottle inside adjust it back or forth either direction Put it like that, ta-da, it stands. You can, well, it's kind of stable. Obviously you can't just push it or, or dance with it, but it will do the job, right? I'm going to use a piece of lumber, which uh, actually it's a leftover, a scrap wood. Uh, I did a window sill, which you can see on my channel, and this is what's left. So I'm going to use that to make the floating wine holder. Amazing thing, again, right? Do I sound American enough? As I said, it's nine inches, but we're going to cut about 10 inches, which is about 25 centimeters. I'm going to tell you why. So I'm cutting 10 inches here and approximately four inches, which is 10 centimeters over here. All right, let's do the cutting now. Just remember, mind your fingers, like don't drink and drive and don't drink and do any woodworking because you kind of like your fingers, right? All right, let's go. So we have 10 inches here and I'm going to cut 4 inches so we have the right measurement. As we have the piece ready, all we need to do is actually cut the right angle here. Well, not the right, but about 42 degrees. That's what I'm going to do. And since this is a lot of alcohol in the workshop, the program should be kind of sponsored by anonymous alcoholics, I think. But I tried, but they said nah. All right, let's do it. So first of all, I'm going to adjust the saw to 42 degrees. Okay, as you know, this is a bit longer than it should be, right? I'm going to cut the angle and then adjust the right measurement. So let's start with the angle. We have the angle, now the right measurement would be from here, from this edge to this here. But before we do that, I need to adjust the saw back to the right angle, which is 90 degrees. We're measuring 9 inches, this edge to this one here. So I'm going to mark 
22 and a half centimeters, which is in Imperial nine inches. The thickness of that board is about an inch. It's 27 millimeters because this is the, the width uh, which basically the window sill was done. So, but it could be a bigger, a slightly uh, thicker than this one here because that's a piece of ash from Ireland and that's a piece of wood from Poland, right? Doesn't really matter. As long as it's holding here, the minimum is one inch. Now, we're going to mark a hole somewhere in the middle. According to the measurements, the center should be about seven inches, a little bit below seven inches from the bottom to the center of that hole, which in, in metric system, that should be approximately 17 and a half centimeters. We have the center of that board here, as well as seven inches, a little bit less than seven inches over here, right? But uh, if you want to do something fancy, it doesn't have to be in the middle over here. If your board is slightly wider, you can actually put somewhere off center. It looks pretty cool, but like this is the first one we're doing. So we're going to do a very simple and very plain job. Before we drill any holes, we have to make sure that when the drill bit goes through, it doesn't make like a shotgun wound on the other side. Therefore, what I'm going to do is actually clamp those two together. So when the drill bit goes through, the other side is nice and neat. As I said before, I'm going to use about one and three eighths of an inch, and that's 35 millimeters, which is three and a half centimeter. Whoa, 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 you don't do that. Did you get that? Just be careful again. Safety first. What the hell is wrong with it? Okay. We're ready. What can go wrong? <laughs> the battery is dead. You have to be prepared. I am kind of prepared. Hopefully this one works better. Let's give it a try. Ta da! We got it. We got it right. There we go. The other side is as good as the front one, which in fact that will save a lot of time of sanding for you. This is it. Now, the other thing which you usually do as a woodworker or um, enthusiast is basically sanding. You start sanding, you do the sanding, you go back to sanding and it's kind of over and over again. You know it yourself. But uh, all I'm going to do since that piece was used for a window sill, which is quite nice and, and very smooth. I'm going to use just maybe two, uh, 240, maybe 180 grit sandpaper just to smooth it up before we put the final coat. So let's go for it. Before you start sanding, you need to check if the edges are kind of, you know, maybe they need more sanding or something like this one here and that the bottom is very smooth, very nice. Now the sides which I cut are not the greatest. So therefore I'm going to use uh, 80 paper just to send it before we go with the number 100 or 80 or uh, 240. So just smooth it up. We're done here with number 80 and I'm going just to smooth it out a bit with number 120. The whole lot of it. <laughs> Whoops! See, these things happen. Sometimes you just lose control over your machine. Now, the reason I'm using 120 is actually to remove a couple of marks from the pencil or whatever dent or whatever happened to it before. You might be tempted to go from one, say, even like not even 100, even less, we used uh, 80 grit. You might be tempted to do 
80 to 240 straight away but don't be don't be that's the rookie's mistake you're not going to get the surface as smooth as it should be when you're skipping just a couple of them in the middle right so i actually kind of skipped because going from 40 from 80 sorry going from 80 i should go through 120 180 and so on right uh, i'm just going straight for 180 but this is just because that has been kind of sanded before okay see it looks good it feels good so it is good but we still need to go with another paper i know it could be boring like sanding over and over again but this is the proper way to do before we start waxing i'm going to check if everything is right which basically means i'm going to check all the three bottles different shapes different sizes and if they work well basically if they stand the smallest one when you put it more too much inside it will fall but if you adjust it from going backwards well does the job right it's gravity defying wine holder now that looks like a typical uh, wine bottle so that actually the whole purpose of doing that is actually for wines not for you know any other other alcohols but I don't drink wine I don't drink any alcohol so this is all I found at home here we go works again right and as I said it matches the best it's just good it's meant for it now the heavy duty uh well, let's give it a try right again it's all physics so that should do the job now let's check it out believe me or not but physics don't lie that's how it works right <laughs> good okay we're ready to go i haven't used this before that's an extra special uh because it's not just wax it's actually whitening wax god knows what's going to happen with it but let's give it a try okay it seems to be finished to be perfectly honest i would expect the whitening wax to be more whitening but i guess the surface the surface is so smooth that the wax is actually not getting so much into it it's just kind of on the surface right but uh, it gets inside a little bit so it does the job prevent from you know getting wet or something but it's not as much whitening as the surface uh inside i polished that i actually sand it but not as thoroughly as i did the rest of it and you can tell it's actually getting whiter inside than on the outside surface right it doesn't matter the important part is again you're doing that for fun you're doing that for yourself it could be a great present you can put a bottle of whiskey a wine on the shelf and enjoy it there right whoops see live tv okay this is it for this is it for now and uh we're going to do some more simple very easy to do projects next time so make sure you watch us next time right take care bye